the moral of the story is they have to do what's best for the franchise, and the best thing to do for the franchise is to move off of Dame. You're welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Mob E and T podcast. This is a special one late night during the draft. If you're watching this right now, subscribe, share it with a friend. If you're listening to this right now, hit the subscribe button, rate us five stars, leave a review, share this with a friend. Fellas, how are y'all doing on this night? Good, man. Good. The Nets got to have a good, good draft night. So I'm, I'm doing pretty well. You know, I'm waiting for this Damian Lillard, Lillard trade request, but I'm doing all right. I'm bored. This was a boring draft today. Why? Because yeah, you had no first round pick. Did you give it for Josh Hart? No. Look what they didn't do anything with it. They took who? Chris Murray. That was pretty- that's a good pick. He's gonna be a good player. <laughs> that's a good player. It's all right. So you I'll better take, I'll take Hart over him in a heartbeat. That's uh, fair. That, I'll that'll take be, that'll Hart be over him in a heartbeat. <laughs> you better you better resign Josh Hart. Don't let him walk out the door. Josh ain't trying to go nowhere. He won't be with his bestie. Josh, Josh ain't going nowhere. What are y'all yeah, been taking breast milk, breast milk together? <laughs> him, and, him and Jalen Brunson. What are your biggest takeaways from this uh this first round? Second round is going on right now. Like Ma said, I it was it's been boring. What was uh your biggest takeaways from this uh round one? <laughs> It was a boring draft because we had so much hype built up about a bunch of trades that could go through and the big ones like, you know, the Lakers trading for Buddy Hill, the Miles Turner was a rumor out there trading 17, um, you know, Nets trading up, right? A bunch of just a bunch of trade action. Obviously, Portland, right? Portland making the trade to get a star. And they obviously tried. They obviously tried to get one. Um, but I think it starts with Portland. They got to talk about Portland. I think I was a bit surprised to see Charlotte go with Brandon Miller over Scoot Henderson. I thought that They'd, when you're that picking that high in the draft, I understand that Brandon Miller is a better fit, but when you're picking that high in the draft, you usually go for the better player. It's usually just the rule of thumb. So I'm surprised they did, they did that, but it also goes to show you how, how highly they view LaMelo, that they still um, went in that direction with Brandon Miller, right? And didn't take Scoot, even though we could argue Scoot's a better player. You really want to make sure that, you know, LaMelo's in the, the ball's in LaMelo's hands and that he's controlling the offense. So I got to, I got to. I got to respect <laughs> – I didn't do that on purpose. I got to respect that. So, so Kill Mill is headed to, uh, to, to Charlotte, and um, we'll see. That. We'll see. That's, that's not his nickname. That's going to catch on. It's not going to catch on. Kill Mill is going to catch on. But he's, he's, headed, he's headed there, and that's, that, I think it's a good pick, though. All, seriously, he's a good hooper. I think it'll fit. Guys who can shoot 6'9", 6'10", can create off the bounce. You know, you, you, you can't get those guys enough. So – That'll be a good fit for them with Miles Bridges and the rest of them. But boy, they got a hell of a they got a but team full of convicts over there, huh? They got Miles Bridges, they got uh Kill Kill Mill, they got who else they got? Well, Lamelo be getting in trouble too. Who? Lamelo be getting in trouble too. That's a good job of hiding it. He, uh, he's a saint on that team in comparison to what we talk, we talking about. James Boot Knight falling asleep in, in cars off lean or whatever it is. I don't know. So it, it's a it's a situation over there, but it's a good basketball pick. It's a good basketball pick. Um, what else? Lame- Lamelo, he ain't uh, he ain't getting no legal trouble, but there's a couple uh, I saw on TikTok. It's a couple people that be uh, at the Charlotte games. Yeah, he, he one bad day away from getting a ticket. He be hitting like sixty yeah. leaving the arena. I've seen he be hitting sixty coming out the coming out the garage, about to run people over. I see that he wilding. He thinks he thinks this is real. This is real life GTA. That's what he thinks this is. Yeah, he operates like that. I've seen that too. So you're right. You're right about that. We're only one bad day away from him being in some trouble. Uh, but he's so good, he'll probably get off with it. Um, <laughs> so, so he, he um, the last hope for Lavar. That, that for real, for real. Um, and and then you know the Portland situation, right? I think that's where the draft starts. That they, they obviously tried to trade um, for star players. We know of a confirmed trade offer they made to the Nets to get. Uh, Macau Bridges, they try to offer them the third overall pick and Anthony Simons, which has Nets Twitter on fire right now because people are just making the rounds. People are finding out about it. Um, you know, and, and by the way, I, I'll just say this. I'm glad the Nets didn't make that trade. That was the right decision not to make the trade. Sean Marks is doing a great job. I got no problem with that choice. So I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that. I won't go into detail. I'm going to turn this into a Nets podcast. But them not making that move, now we're waiting for the next domino to fall, which is Damian Lillard requesting his trade and asking out and so hopefully dame does ask out and we can move forward but the rumor is he's not going to be making a choice until what 
free agency starts. So we got another month of this crap of just speculation. So yeah, he's annoying. But that's the that's the entire draft night right there. We could talk about individual players, but that's the draft night. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I mean, there wasn't much that went into it. What happened? I said there wasn't much that went into it. It was Scoot going to Portland, which creates a little bit of a log jam. Yeah. With three guards, for sure. And Dame's got some decisions to make, but... Four guards. <laughs> true. Um, but with Orlando, I was looking at that. Now they have, like, five point guard, combo guards on their roster. So they got to do some... <laughs> some trades at some point, Cole Anthony. I'm trading. I'm trading Cole Anthony just because he's corny. He's out of there. Bye. Cole Anthony's got to go. You know, Jalen Suggs. It hasn't really worked out. Otherwise, I don't know if you make this pick if he had you know hit in the last couple years. Mm. And Markel Fultz. I mean, you're not really tied to him long term. He's. I do like Markel good. though. He is good. Of the three, that'd be the one I keep. But yeah. Uh, Anthony Black is is really good, so I'd want him to get as much run as you can because this team's not really competing for anything. And got a nice quarter. Yeah, he's 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 a good player, and next to Paolo, that's going to be a solid piece. So. Yeah, yeah. Who was and outside of Wembenyama? Because we already we're not even going to discuss that. Outside of Wembenyama, outside of school, Brandon Miller. In that first round, which player you think is like really in the best position to make an impact this season to help their team out? Let's see. That's that's actually a I I think there's a lot of ways you could go with this. I think the draft is just is the talent was pretty equally dispersed all over the draft. I think um, if you look at it, I, I love the Lakers pick the JHS. I don't want to say Jalen Hood Shafino. I I've liked him. Since um he, since pretty early on in the draft process, I've been watching him. I like him a lot. Um, I think he can impact them off the bench. He's in the play, and he's in the play. Um, plug and play guy. He won't. He, you know, if he starts, it's because you know there's injuries. But he's gonna be a nice change of pace from D'Angelo Russell. Be a nice addition to the backcourt. I like him a lot. Um, obviously Anthony Black is a guy who's gonna go in there and just run the show right away alongside Paolo. Um, to who else would I say here that I, I like a lot? Um, Jerry's Walker. Jarius Walker and I don't, where exactly did he go? He got there was a movement. There was a movement there with him. I think he ended up in Washington. Indiana. No, where? In Indiana. Indiana. Oh, lucky, lucky him. Nice location. So yeah, he ended up in Indiana. Okay, I I, I think that that's going to be a good fit though. He's going to be a good player with Tyrese Halliburton, Miles Turner, Buddy. If they keep those guys, um, that's a nice phase and impact them right away. Like think about like a Jeremy Grant. Like that's what it's, it's going to look like, and not right away, but you're going to see hit flashes of it. So I think that's a nice little addition there too, um, but yeah, going on and there's a lot more. I mean, a lot of a lot of guys in this draft class are really solid um, as well. I think Derek Lively can help the Mavericks pretty early, right? Just coming off the bench as a, as a backup five um, as well. I think Derek Whitehead can help the Nets, right? Coming in off the bench, I really think he can. I think he can come in, knock down shots at least in a spot up role. But I think he's gonna have a bigger role than that off the bench. He's gonna grow. He's gonna be asked to run the offense when Spencer Dinwiddie is sitting on the bench. And hopefully it's Damian Lillard, not Dinwiddie. We're talking about. Um, he could back up D- Damian Lillard. That'd be nice. But yeah, I think I think that it'll be an, it'll be a nice fit there for him too. I think he's gonna have a nice role off the bench. Well, for me, I liked the Miami Heat pick. Oh yeah, Miami. I mean, I mean that that fits them perfectly. Like he he feels like an undrafted, but he's good enough. Like he's been in college a while. He's skilled. He's got the backs of the basket. He can shoot. That feels like a, a Miami Heat pick. Yeah. He's going to play right away because they're going to lose Max Struess. And he kind of slides right into his role, I think. Uh, Julian Strother from Gonzaga going to Denver. That was a really good pick. Because, like they were saying on the broadcast, they're going to be picking this late moving forward. And they've got a lot of money tied up in those top three guys. So they've got to hit on these picks. And I think they hit on Christian Braun or Brown. I keep saying Braun. Christian Brown, and I think this is a solid pick too. Like he stayed in college an extra year to develop, and he's a spot up shooter. He's better as a spot up shooter. So you need shooters around Jamal and Jokic. So that's another solid pick. And then I like the Amen Thompson to Houston, which I feel like this signals the end of Kevin Porter Jr. at some point. Like I don't think 
that contract's really set up long term for him to be tied to them. I think there's outs in that contract. So, and I, I upside wise, I like Amen a lot more mm-hmm. than Kevin Porter. I think that kid athletically is probably the most athletic kid in this draft. His playmaking is solid, and if he can develop a jump shot, him, it doesn't matter if they keep Jalen Green or not, but he's a franchise piece right there. I think that's safe to say for those listening, for those watching, if something happens in the second round, we ain't get to it. That was pretty much the draft right there. Um, as we said, super boring. A lot of trades went down. We're going to touch on the trades. I want to touch on this because I know a lot of people aren't going to talk about this, and we like to educate y'all on this podcast. We're going to either educate y'all, we're going to entertain y'all, make y'all laugh, or we're going to make y'all think about something. Like It's going to be one of those three things you get from the Bench Mob ENT podcast. Maz and Greg, for our listeners, for our watchers, can you break down the importance, the value, the significance of the Qatar Investment Authority becoming minority owners, I believe it was. They invested in the Washington Wizards. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a big deal. That's a big deal. It went under the radar because the Jordan Poole trade happened right before it. So no one's talking about, you know, no one's talking about it, but that's a big deal. I mean, they've obviously caused uh, quite a stir in, in the golf world. And I look, I get why people don't know about these guys because who cares about golf? <laughs> so I understand that you guys wouldn't know about this because I, I look, I wouldn't have known about this whole LIV golf thing. Or is, is that, if that's how it's pronounced, I don't know if it's live or LIV, but yeah, it's live, live. live. Yeah, whatever, man, you see, there you go. I don't know about either. So I'm with y'all, but no, in all seriousness, though, they bought into golf and they spent a lot of money um, trying to get guys to go into their own uh, league and own sector of golf and, it's caused quite quite a stir because obviously you're talking about the Middle East getting involved here, and we we know that the America and the Middle East are not are not best buds, right? For obvious reasons. So um, now they they they're throwing money around. They're 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 loaded. They, we're talking about richer than ninety five percent of owners in most sports, and now they're coming in and they're looking to claim uh, to get a stake and claim a stake in every single sport. And basketball is the next thing on the list. So for them to get the Wizards during the time of their transition right now. It's just the beginning, right? They can outbid just about any ownership group that can pull their money together for a team, right? Including Ishbia, who's out here trying to, you know, run the world. And I'm sure we'll get to talk about him soon too, which would be cool. But um, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's 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 very relevant. You're you're gonna it's like you're gonna hear about it more and more as this whole free agency and draft conversation dies down because it's gonna be it brings up a conversation about more moral morale and morals and. Um, whether or not it's, it's right to align yourself with the, with the uh, Middle Eastern ownership group coming in. And um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a really interesting conversation that's going to start kind of happening. And I, I, I do think that a small sector of fans are going to care about it. Other people won't, right? But it, do, it does matter. It does matter because these guys can go buy another team. This ain't the only thing they can get, okay? And, and that's what makes this really important. So look at teams like the Lakers who only make money from the fact that they are they own the Lakers, right? Genie Bus only her only source of revenue is the Lakers, right? So at some point that but that well dries it well, runs dry, right? She doesn't want to be in luxury tax, right? She's not making these high-end moves, right? Where it's like you you associate teams that are in a win now mode with being with not being scared of the tax apron, but she is gonna be scared of the tax apron because the crip is the only way she makes her money. It's at the crip. That's it. That's that's her that's her income. So um, you know, look at look at teams like that and look at them as like teams that are in danger of being bought out by this group at some point. They're not done. They're not done. No, with this whole situation, it's just interesting because most people that have an issue with it, it stems from 9-11. And most of these people in Saudi, they feel like they've had something to do with this for a long time. And also they killed a reporter not too long ago. Yeah, they beheaded him and all that stuff. So now, now what's going on is they're like sports washing. They're trying to make us forget about everything that they've done by buying up sports, whether that's basketball, whether that's creating your own league that rivals the biggest golfing league there is to create noise. 
what else? They tried to create a soccer league where they, they paid Cristiano Ronaldo a boatload of money. They tried to pay Messi almost a billion dollars to get him to come over here because nobody's going to be thinking about what they did. They're going to be thinking about Messi and buying his jersey and all that stuff and what he brings to that sport over there. So it's, it's one of those things where it's just interesting that now all of a sudden they're so active in getting involved in sports. And a lot of people are wondering why. Well, that's it. They're trying to make people look over the fact that they've been involved in some pretty nefarious things out there in the world. And I, I didn't have a problem with the live thing because I'm just like, most people don't really care about golf. But then once they start venturing into, let's say, the NBA, even though if they bought a, a piece of the, the Warriors, I think people would care a little more than them buying a piece of the Wizards. Because, I mean, who cares about what? Let me not say who cares about Washington, but who cares about the Wizards? Because they don't have anything of significance that we're really worried about. But this is them slowly working their way into major sports in America. And I don't know. If I'm the normal fan, eventually I'm going to have an issue with it. Like right now, they're not totally all in. But like once they start getting involved in the NFL, MLB, which I'm sure that's going to happen at some point. They got so much money, they can pretty much throw it at somebody. And who's going to refuse that much money? So it's a, it's a tough position that they put us in. You hit the head on the nail. It's sports washing to the umph degree. It's only a matter of time before, like you said, they're into everything. As a Lakers fan, I wouldn't mind. Go give Gene, go give Jeannie Bus an influx of money so this could get back to championship ways. I think it's significant too, also. Their first team in the NBA that they're investing in is in Washington. I, with everything that they, you know, are associated with, first team y'all choose to do is in our nation's capital. I don't think that's by any coincidence, not saying anything's going to happen, not like that. But I just find that very interesting. But we had to drop that knowledge on y'all. So we know a lot of people ain't going to talk about it. Y'all will see this on our social medias too, if you follow us on social media. But back to original programming. Earlier, before everything happened today, one of the earlier trades that happened about, I believe it was like last week that we didn't get to talk about because it happened after the show, Bradley Bill is a Phoenix Sun now. What? What's y'all takeaways from Bradley Bill on Phoenix? Are they that much better? with Bradley Bill, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant as their, their big three. I mean, if they were playing in the big three, this would be great. This would be a <laughs> fantastic team. But Yo. this is how you got to formulate a whole roster of like 12 to 15 people. I don't know how they're going to do it because Bradley Bill's making a ton of money. Kevin Durant's making a lot of money. And Devin Booker, same thing. So – and then I almost forgot they have DeAndre Aiden still, who nobody's going to take because why am I going to help you build a dominant team to beat us when you have deficiencies all over your roster? So, I mean, that, it is what it is. They're trying to score as much as they can, but also you got to, at the other end, stop somebody. And I don't know. Bradley Beal's not really a, a defender. Durant's kind of relaxed a little bit on defense. Devin Booker stepped it up a little bit, but I figure he's going to be so exhausted from playmaking that I don't know if he'll be playing defense at an all defensive level. So what are we what are we really talking about? Like this Suns team, I saw someone saying who is a perk said they're the favorites now for <laughs> the NBA Finals championship next year because of all these names. Like is is that what we're doing? We're crowning them before we actually see it on paper. Because if I remember correctly, when they made the Durant trade, people said they're going to go to the finals. This was a finals team 
no doubt about it. But they got knocked out the semifinals by the, the eventual champions. So I don't know. There's a lot of good teams in the West, and I don't know if this really puts them that far ahead. They're still in that top four range, but it's not it's not pushing the needle like they thought it would. I want to point out something, too. I don't even know if Devin Booker is as good – not Devin Booker, Bradley Bill – is as good as people are saying. He might be the fourth option on this team – he has not been the same last three years. Throw this out there. After his 31, you know, averaging 30 points, 2021, 2022, only 23 points per game, 30% from three point. 2022, 2023, 36% from three point. He hasn't even played as many games also on top of that. So you traded for Bradley Bill over the last two seasons, hasn't played, I think it was 60 and like 56. He hasn't played 70 games. Kevin Durant, you got concerns if he's going to play a whole season. So your two main people that you added to this squad that's supposed to help y'all supposedly win a championship can't be relied on to be on the court every day. Then you can't rely on Kevin Durant or Bradley Bill playing defense. Then we want to add to it that Bradley Bill, say what you want, his game has declined. His game has declined, and honestly – you was playing basketball that didn't matter. Nobody cared about Washington, which is why Qatar bought part of Washington Wizards. Nobody cared about Washington. Nobody thinking about Washington. So now you're going to be playing meaningful games in Phoenix. And because Kendrick is already crowning them as the champions. So you know on first take, all the shows next season, what's it going to be talking about? Phoenix. So it's going to be Microsoft on Bradley Bill not showing up. It's true. It's true. I think, I think it's a good situation for Bradley Bill at the same time. I, and I think that's not, that's not the discussion that people are having, whether or not it's a good situation for him. But it is because whether or not Bradley Bill performs well or not, well, or he doesn't, we're, all, we're only going to blame Kevin Durant at the end of the day anyways. Okay, we're gonna blame him. <laughs> we're gonna blame the Kevin Kevin Durant, and I think Kevin and I know Kevin Durant knows that, and I know he says he doesn't care, but he clearly does care. The same song and dance with that guy, but you know, this is what the third super team he's played on, or second, I guess. Now we can call it the, no third, third, third super team he's played on at this point. Uh, Brooklyn, Golden State, now here, and you know the the the, the reality is is that this team is not built to win to win a championship. I know that they are going to go out there and try to get additional pieces to make that happen but the brad bill points y'all both made them okay the guy's not is injury prone he hasn't played a full season in maybe three or four seasons now um so there's that aspect of it they're all injury prone actually devin booker less so i think devin booker gets a rough rap he got hurt all right like and and and, and it hasn't happened as often to him injuries at this point but he did get hurt last year and missed time but you know, between Kevin Durant and, and Bradley Beal, that's a lot of trips to the to the local hospital in Phoenix. You know, we don't know when these guys are going to go down, and, and it's just a tough thing. I mean, I hope they stay healthy because the reality is while I openly root against Phoenix, I realize that even if they stay healthy, they're not, they're not winning a chip, all right? You're asking a lot out of Bradley Beal here to come and go from being in Washington and playing with no eyes on you, like Antonio said, uh, to now being having all the eyeballs on you and to go from playing losing basketball to playing winning basketball. And that's the biggest adjustment is taking good shots, uh, understanding time and possession. Those things matter, right? Playing good defense, making extra efforts, diving on the floor for loose balls, right? It's not, it's not Denny Alvia's job anymore to, to get in the ball, you know, to, to, to do the dirty work. It's your job now, right? Like, so I, I just think he's going to be a big culture shock for him. I think he was very comfortable in Washington. He didn't request this trade. Remember that he did not request the trade. Washington got new, new, well, not new, well, new ownership, yes, but also new management to come in, and they said, "Hey, this, this is ridiculous. This is past due. You're getting paid way too much money. You're not that good. Hey, man, let, let's get you out of here. Uh, you have no trade clause. I'll get, I'll trade you where you want to go." But it wasn't Brad Bill thirsting to go win a championship, and that, my friend, matters. He didn't seek this out. They wanted to get him out of there to do what's right for the organization. He never tried to go because anywhere where the focus was winning a championship. And there's a reason for that, guys. He was comfortable playing mediocre basketball, losing basketball. He was comfortable with that reality. He was fine doing that. He could have done it the rest of his career. 
we have to remember that part about Bradley Beal because when he doesn't show up in the playoffs, when he doesn't play well, when he doesn't play defense, when he's getting exposed night to night on that end, he's going to have great nights. He's going to have 40-point nights. They're going to look great offensively a lot of nights. Don't get me wrong, but he's going to have critical moments in the playoffs especially where he's not going to play well specifically on defense. And just remember that I said this, that he was comfortable playing losing basketball. It's a lot harder to play winning basketball than it is to play losing basketball. Just is. I've said this in this podcast a million times. I, I would say I was made, I made this point about the RJ versus Tyler Hero to be. I was doing that because it, it applied then too at the time. At the time. Obviously, the Knicks are winning now. At the time, it applied. So it's the same conversation, right? Don't, don't talk to me about averaging 30 points on a losing team. Talk to me about averaging 30 points on a team that wins games. That's impressive. That's what gets the job done and or or just winning games in general. So we'll see. We'll see, man. I, I think he's a good player, but he's certainly not the player he once was. Um, and I don't think this moves the needle. Uh, Den- Denver's still better than them. The Lakers are still better than them. The Clippers are probably probably going to be better than them. We'll see. Th- those guys never play. You know how that goes. Those guys don't, don't show up to work. So we'll see how that goes. Dallas could be better than them. It depends on the moves they make, right? But then again, Kyrie. So, you know, maybe I won't talk about them. Um, it just depends. It just depends. But I think there's at least two teams solidified that are certainly better than them. And OKC could be better than them, too. And people sleep on OKC. OKC could be better than a lot of teams this year. OKC could be better than them, too. So, hey, man, um, it's a cool move. It's, it's sexy. It made some noise. Nice flash. But at the end of the day, not a smart one. And they, they, don't, have, they don't have a first-round pick for the next 10 years. For the next 10 years, no first-round pick. And this, the shelf life on this, on this little uh, situation here, this little super team, it's about three years, four years tops. It's, it, it'll end quick. All right, so we'll see. Not only that, this speaks to the new, you mentioned Washington, the new ownership and new leadership over at Phoenix. Ishbia and Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> what, a, what a combination. And Miles already knows. I'm not going to go into detail what he did to the Knicks because I don't want to have Miles catch a seizure or anything like that because I know that was a tough time when he was trying to sign every single old veteran and take every bad contract on Steve Francis, Zach Randolph, Jalen Rose for 17 games. He was trying to take any and every player that was good 10 years ago that was getting paid 17, 18 million dollars. And the reason this man explained for taking those contracts was they expire at some point. What? He doesn't feel any differently now. He did the same thing with Brad Bill. Brad Bill getting paid $60 million a year. As I guess it's going to expire someday. He has a no trade clause, which hurts you in terms of getting assets for him one day. He's no. a trade clause. Washington. What was going on in Washington? This man has a he has the ultimate no trade clause. He's in Phoenix now, and that no trade clause is still a part of the contract. How did Bradley Bill? I get loyalty, but how did Bradley Bill get a no trade clause? LeBron doesn't have a no trade clause, guys. LeBron doesn't have one. Bradley Beal has one. KD didn't have one. Bradley Beal. Now I get it. Washington, the chocolate city, they're desperate. All right, they're desperate. I get that. So if that's the point, that's fine. But damn, wow. I mean, this this ain't that much desperate in the world because he would have took that money and been fine. The guy didn't care about winning. It was perfect. It was a match made in heaven. He didn't care. You offer that guy $50 million a year. He's, he's keeping it. He's thinking about his kids. He's thinking about sending him to great schools. He's thinking about his kids' kids. I understand. I understand. That's fine. I got nothing against Bradley Gill for that. But he didn't want this smoke. He did not want this smoke. And I just think it's going to be very interesting. Miami would have been a very different grind for him. I, I think it's very interesting him going to this team. I think. I oh, think it, I think that makes perfect sense. Because yeah. Miami, it's a bigger role for him. And the thing is to what you alluded to. Bradley Bill, on the flip side, like, I don't think it works. We all agree it doesn't work. But Bradley Bill, he is Teflon Don certified covered in this. Because, as you said, if they win, it don't matter. He's not getting the credit anyway. It's going yeah. to KD. If they lose, it's on KD head. He's in a win-win situation regardless. Here's what I'll say to that, though. If they win, Kevin Durant's not going to get no credit. From, pe- from from certain people, he will. But from the general public, everyone's going to be like, oh, I guess you're third super team. You're just hopping from super team to super team. He's a super team guy. He's a super team thought. That's who he is now. Hey, I saw this post, and it's so true. Kevin Durant is what they say LeBron James is. Yes. 
<laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> it's exactly what y'all think LeBron is, but y'all be arguing about in barbershops sounding like idiots. It's Kevin Durant. It's Kevin Durant. That's who it is. Only person who don't think, only person who disagrees with this is Kevin Durant's boyfriend, Eddie Gonzalez. That's it. <laughs> We're going to come back to Kevin Durant because he made a tweet that I think is very just asinine. Um, Matt Ishbia also, a part of their new regime, him and Isaiah Thomas. They don't want a point guard there, so they got rid of Chris Paul. Chris Paul was straight to Washington. The deal got finalized today. He is now a Golden State Warrior, which if you told us that and you told CP3 who was on Houston, CP3 that was on the Clippers, who has been fighting the Warriors for years, having smoking beef with Steph Curry for years, you would not believe it. What does this mean for Golden State? Like, how much better they are? Does this even work? What was your thoughts from this? My first thing, and y'all got the floor. The team gets smarter immediately, y'all. <laughs> you traded Jordan Poole. The team gets smarter already. You able to take your SATs, your ACTs, and, and pass with flying colors now. And this facts. This is like a salary dump, though. That's what it felt like. Because yeah. now Chris Paul's contract aligns with Clay Thompson's, where it gets off the books after next year. So then that opens up almost $80 million in salary that they can use because clearly they're not going young. They're building around Steph Curry and they're pushing all the chips in, going all in on winning again with Steph Curry, which not a bad idea. Like Steph Curry's still really good. And Jordan Poole just didn't really fit in that timeline because I think he wanted to be the guy, but as long as Steph Curry's there and he's healthy, it's never going to happen. And the way he plays is just too erratic for what Steve Kerr wants. And look, Chris Paul, you can put Chris Paul out there with Steph Curry and Steph Curry can play off ball now. And you don't have to worry about the decisions being made where somebody's heaving up a 35 footer for no apparent reason. So I think it's a good move. If he stays for the full year, then a really good move but i think that this frees them up to make some more moves moving forward i th i couldn't agree more it was definitely a salary dump you look at what they got in return for him it's chris paul to the point where we all thought that they were going to move chris paul right away right they had no interest in keeping him uh they didn't they weren't looking for incredible value for the jordan pool contract i think they got rid of jordan pool because they wanted to open up space to negotiate with your draymond green and get him paid I think that was the main logic uh, behind the deal. I think I think, I think they're going to keep CP3 from everything I understand, from people who are plugged in, they're going to keep him. And I think he does help them. They get smarter, like like Tone said. I think CP3 is a, CP, CP3 is a kind of player who can play any system with anybody. He's that smart. He's that intelligent. Um, and even though he's in an advanced age where injury, obviously, is a question with him, you're not asking him to, to run the show in the same you know manner, right? Steph Curry essentially plays the two anyways um, at this point. So... Um, having him play point guard, be on the ball and facilitate for Clay and Steph is brilliant. Now, defensively, you take a hit, having them all in your starting lineup. I don't think you're as good defensively, right? But you also traded a guy who don't play defense for him anyway. So what difference does it really make? You know what I mean? It's just going to be interesting to see how they um, handle things defensively. They cannot afford to lose Draymond Green after this trade. That's what I'll say. They can't afford to lose him. If they lose him, they're not serious about winning a championship. And even if they think they are, they're not. Uh, they, they can't do that. And Dallas just put up a whole bunch of cap space getting rid of Davis Bertans, who hasn't hit a three-pointer since 2016 when he signed his deal in the first place, his new deal, and they got him out of town. He was making like $80 million over the course of five years. He's gone, salary dump, and a trade tonight during the draft. And so I think Dallas is going to go after Draymond Hard because Dallas needs a defensive anchor. And you can tell they're defensively minded because they went after Derek Lively in the draft to protect the rim. Kyrie not going to play no defense. Luca not gonna play no defense. You don't, you're not getting Dorian Finney Smith back. There are rumors about that. That didn't happen for you. So you have to get defensively minded as a team quick. I think that Draymond Green's the way you do that. And you pair him up with there with a lively. And they're gonna continue to add defensively minded guys who can hit some threes occasionally. But that's their goal because they figured they have enough scoring between um Doncic and, and, and Kyrie for days. They have enough scoring there. So you try to add the defense. So just they're they're a dark horse for a guy like Draymond Services. 
And that'll be interesting. But they can't lose Draymond after adding CP because that lineup's going to be very small. And we know Clay can't guard uh, Cone these days. And we know that Steph has never been able to guard a parked car. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they can do um, to make themselves better defensively because they have they have to keep a guy like Draymond and make sure they have a chance. I think Chris also – Chris... hmm? I was about to say, yeah, I think Paul also Chris Paul, Paul might not even start, and I think that actually helps them more. Yeah. Chris Paul coming off the bench and depending on what they do in free agency, if they add another one or two veteran pieces – with the draft pick they got tonight, that's a shooter. Chris Paul helping that bench out. Yeah. And then that saves Chris Paul, too. Chris Paul ain't got to play major yeah. minutes. He's been averaging the last two seasons. Last three seasons, he played 38 minutes, 32, and 33 minutes. Yeah. Chris Paul ain't got to do that no more. We need you in the playoffs. And then once the playoffs come, that's where you probably see that same type of role where it's like, all right, you come off the bench, but those fourth quarters where it's a close game, let the, let the floor general get on the court, get Steph an easy shot, get Clay an easy shot, yeah. get Wig an easy shot. That'll be perfect. Jordan Poole is on the Wizards now with Tyus Jones. I say this, I kind of they not one of the top young nucleuses, but I do like that backcourt and I like what they're doing in Washington now since they're tearing it down to the studs. Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole is a nice way to start off rebuilding that franchise. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree. I love Tyus Jones. Uh, I was hoping that maybe they'd want to flip him, you know, for assets because they're just trying to be the worst team in basketball history. So I figured they'd try to flip him. But, no, he's he's great. Uh, doesn't turn the ball over. Phenomenal, phenomenal point guard. I think in a true point guard in, in an era where there aren't many true point guards left. And so I think that he's going to go out there and stabilize them. And they're going to win more games than they probably should because they have him. And, and I think having him next to uh, Jordan Poole can just take the most idiotic shots you'll ever see. It's actually a nice change of pace for them in the backcourt. I think it's a nice situation for them and a, and a nice balancing act. Yin and yang, if you will, right? So I think it's going to be a nice situation when you look at that, um, those two guys pair together. I, I think – and and – you know, they're not going to, they don't, again, they don't want to win much. So maybe they will consider trading ties if the team, if a team comes along with a great offer, but it's a good place to start for a team like them, a good place. To, and I think they got the kid Bilal, whatever his name is, cool, cool, the French kid, you know, I'm not usually the highest in the French, but I think that he'll go out there and he'll, he'll do his thing. I think he's, a, he's, a, he's a talented guy, athletic, grew a foot on in the last year. He has night. He's very interesting. He's a very interesting prospect. So um, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. They may be better than they want to be, but they're clearly not trying to be good. Hey, before Miles, before you you go, the other thing too, like uh, y'all want to be bad now? Y'all should have got rid of Bill last year for Wimby. Right. Why y'all taking now? Who who coming in? Y'all. Right. I saw somebody put up a post. They try to get uh LeBron to come over there with with Bronny in two years. Like Maybe. why y'all trying to? <laughs> why are they trying to be bad now? They make the worst time to be bad. This is a terribly run organization. And, and by the way, the Beal situation is very, it, there's parallels to the Beal situation uh, to also the Dame situation, right? If the Blazers keep waiting, and they shouldn't have waited this long, they've waited too long, they're going to keep blowing opportunities to get great players in the door. And yes, they got, look, you got the third overall pick with Dame on your team. You're tanking with Dame on the team, guys. Like, if Dame was as great as, as, as we all, as people say he is, and Dame's a very, very, he's a great point guard, he is. But if he's as great as people say he is, you would never be in a position where you would pick him third overall with that guy on your team. Told me when prime Bron, and I know Bron's not a great comparison, but even prime KD, you, you had him on the team and you're picking third overall because you're just that bad in spite of having that guy at the height of his power. Dame had a great season offensively, probably his best season offensively ever, and you were still picking third, right? The moral of the story is, they have to do his best for the franchise and the best thing to do for the franchise is to move off of Dame and don't, and, and look, you've already, you, you've already done what the, the Wizards have done. We've taken too long to do it, but it needs to happen now. Stop prolonging the inevitable. This is not some like charity, like sob story. Oh, he came to, he's not ducking the grind. He's, he's, he came to Portland. He's never complained. He's this and that he's, you know, all this stuff, like, give me a break. It's time to move on and be smart and make the right move. You were, you were smart to trade uh, CJ McCollum. You saw that wasn't working, right? What's the difference here? It's, it's, it's no, a game's a better player, but there's no difference. 
It's time to move off of him and get him to a place where he can go get a chance to win and give yourself a chance to reset, period. You ain't even got nothing to say, you see? <laughs> I mean, that sounds, it sounds nice, but it now it depends on where, where's he gonna go? Because we're moved, we moved on to Dame talk now, right? I guess, we came right. back to Dame. Well, we we just jumped over a couple topics, so now we on. What topics we gotta talk about? We ain't talk about no baby. The wizards, but then they're, they're not important. We talk about the wizards for it. <laughs> Yo, Tom, weren't we just talking about the wizards? We was. It's the wizards. No one cares. <laughs> All right, you're right. Nobody cares about the wizards. All right, so Dame, yeah, he should ask out. Like this is long overdue. It's almost like a couple years overdue. He should have asked out either last summer or the year before that. Because at some point, you got to realize, like, I'm capped at this position that I'm in with Portland. Like, there's too many good teams in the West. Like, we're never going to get top guys to want to come here. Like, the best they've done is Jeremy Grant, and they're going to re-sign him to, like, a five-year, 150 million. That's not – that doesn't even help, really. Like – I'd rather have Shaden Sharp in his spot because I think that kid is going to be special. But at the same time, if you do that, then you might as well trade Dame. So, but now it comes down to where? Where is he going? Is it Brooklyn? Is it Miami? The, the air is real dirty up here, so I don't know if he want to. Not all. He wants to breathe this 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 murky air in Brooklyn. It's definitely uh, clear in Miami, but yo. Yo, but they don't want to, they're not trading Scoot under any circumstances. So sources no, of they that, shouldn't. right. Okay. They, okay. They shouldn't. So let's let's say that let's say the, the the Blazers have a best case scenario with this. They go into the, the season with this roster that's currently constructed, they go to the playoffs. Let's say they have a great season. They win 45 games, go to the playoffs, low seed. Even if you get there with this roster, Shaden Sharp, Scoot, Anthony Simons. They don't, they're not ready to play winning meaningful basketball yet. They're not going to make big shots and big moments because they're not ready. So e- even if you had the best case scenario with this current roster, you can't win a championship. You can't even compete for one. You are one and done. You get in, you're gone. It's cute. Bye. That's the situation for the Blazers. So what the, what is he even waiting for? He's just being utterly ridiculous. And if you're going to stay, just come out and say you're going to stay. Just come out and say you're going to stay. It's fine. You can be on some Bradley Beal stuff. I understand that. I know, I know you built, I know Dame's built for the playoffs though. So I, I respect Beal, I mean, Lillard, Lillard's work far more than I respect Beal's work. I know that in the, in the, when it comes down to it, that guy's a big-time clutch performer. We've seen it. But come on now. Like, it's either, it's either you're going to go into the situation where you want to win a championship and at least compete for one and have, give yourself a real chance to do so, or we're going to play the same little game and song and dance we've been playing with the Blazers. And it's, it's, it's pointless. It, it's not a good situation. There's no trade candidate out there. The the Clippers the Clippers have been dangling Paul George out there a little bit like some like some meat in front of sharks. It ain't he ain't going nowhere. He's staying at least for the year. They're not gonna blow this thing up going into a new building, guys. Really, they're going to a new building. They, they want to sell you. They want to sell tickets, guys. At the Crib Junior, they want they want to sell some tickets down the street. So what do you think they're gonna do? They're not gonna trade Paul George or Kawhi yet. They're gonna go one more or two more years with those guys and then try to ship them out later. That's what they're gonna do because they don't sell tickets. So you know, and by the way. That Paul George trade where he got sent from OKC to, to the Clippers is possibly the second worst trade of this of this decade. The, maybe no, in the last two decades. The second worst trade in the last two decades is that Paul George deal. Look back at the deal. Shea Gilgis and a million first round picks. And I think I'm sure some other players were involved. And just for Paul George, no other player came from OKC besides Paul George, just him. And he's played like 10 games since getting there. All right. It hasn't been 10 games. Come on. 10 games. Jerry West told him to his face that you and you and Kawhi on the same team. Y'all can't play a goddamn game. All right. You're going to take that whole clip. That's what he said. That was, a, that was like a five minute long conversation. Yeah, y'all can't play a game. That one 10 second. The <laughs> <laughs> dude and got there and played 10 games, man. I, look, so yeah, I just want to say that's one of the worst trades I've ever seen. I think it's very important um, to, to highlight that, but yeah, man, I mean, I, looking at this in its entirety, it's just time for Dane to make a move, man. It's 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 beyond time. And if, if someone's frustrated, if someone's frustrated with Damian Lillard, I understand why. 
No, this- but so then if he does then make a move and from what I've heard, Jimmy's going to be recruiting. Is Macau, is Macau recruiting too? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> you, you, why don't you answer that question? Because you're, 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 you're enough in the know. I'm not talking to someone who's one of these idiots in the comments down under the post. I'm talking to you. So what do you think? <laughs> well, they're buddies. So, of course, I think he's going to be talking to him. I saw a video of these dudes, Brookfield dancing and all that stuff, doing that whack, that whack California dance together at some, at some party. You think he's not recruiting him? Come on, guys. We, we know he is. And, and the, Nets, the, Nets, the, Nets, the Nets can have them if they want him. It, he is theirs to lose. There is no other team who is more well-equipped to offer a better package than the Nets for Damian Lillard. The only way Dame goes somewhere else if the Nets aren't all in on him, if the Nets are all in on Dame, the only way he goes anywhere else is if he directly forces their hand and says, I want to go here and only here. Only way. Which only could way. happen. He yeah. could do that. You, you act like How he would he do that? Why would he do that? I, if Why would he's he being do recruited that? by Jimmy and he thinks that he has a better shot to win with Jimmy and Bam and what they have in Miami, why wouldn't he ask to go there? He That's the least part he can do teams. is respect his wishes. He talked about those two teams like they were equals. He said he mentioned them in the same sentence. He just mentioned Miami first, and everyone's running with it. Obviously, I'd rather live in Miami. I'll say this again. I'd rather live in Miami than Brooklyn. Duh. I'd rather live in Miami. If I have money, I'm going to live in Miami. I don't want to live in Brooklyn for what? What are you talking about? But if from a basketball perspective, I- I'm sorry, Miami's on that much further ahead than Brooklyn. There's a bunch of parody in the league, man. I'm sorry. And you're not going to convince me that him with Bam and Jimmy and Kyle and Kyle BBL Ari, if he's still there, or whoever they keep, is, is going is gonna to be a better fit than him with Cam Johnson, Nick, Nick Claxton, Macau Bridges, who is better than Jimmy Butler, I think, or will be, or will be. He's, a, he's an ascending talent. He will be. You're the one starting it today, huh? He, right. he will be. Macau Bridges will be better than Jimmy Butler within the next year. All year. right. I'm just saying. So Macau Bridges is, and Cam Johnson, who's an ascending talent. Cam Johnson, one of the most underrated players in the NBA. Another ascending talent. What? With a million other draft picks you can go after. You can go, you can go use. Right? There's still a room for them. I'm not yeah. ready to say that Macau is better than Jimmy at this but point. He will be. But he will be. He's, a, he's ascending. And Jimmy is, reaching, is, is climbing up the prime. That's all I'm saying. Okay, it's not like Dame can put his age on pause. He so can't what? wait for him to. You, you want to play with a single talent? You got, you listen. You want, who do you want to play with? The guy who never misses a game ever, or the guy who misses games and only plays hard during the playoffs. You might not make the playoffs. They, they, they almost didn't make it. We even forget that they almost didn't make it. They were they almost didn't make it, and they made the finals because Jimmy was on. Well, and listen, listen. There was a str- there was a string of luck in this finals run. Let's be let's let's stop. Let's stop. We're not talking about we're not talking about a we're a great team. We're talking about a great organization. Great organization, not a great team, a great organization. Not that so they there's parity in the league. They caught it the right time. Giannis Giannis blew his back out in round one. They go past the Bucks, right? If Giannis don't blow his back out, they might. They would you rather go to a Bucks. great organization, or would you want to call the general up real quick? <laughs> The Nets, hey, the Nets, I don't care what nobody says. The Nets are a damn good organization. I don't care what noise. Kyrie came there and made them look like fools. That's what happened. And everyone want to take that and run with it. The Nets are a damn well-run organization. Yes, they are. And I got I can say that with my chest. I know that. And I don't care what nobody say. If he posts this clip and people are like, what are you talking about? Kyrie, KD. You think I give a damn about opinion of sheep? I don't care about the opinions of sheep. I don't care. I don't care, guys. The Nets are clearly the uh, damn good organization. How do you attract Katie to come there in the first place? How do you attract Kyrie to come there in the first place? How do you attract Damian Lillard to even mention your name when he's looking at it? Guys, stars are going to want to come here. That's the reality of the Nets. Stars are always going to want to come. This is a destination. They got a great practice facility. They practice 10 minutes from their, from their uh, arena. This is, this is, Brooklyn's a nice up-and-coming gentrified air neighborhood. You don't got to duck no bullets to get there. You're not talking about Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a great situation. I'm just saying, like this is a good organization, man. Like let's 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 keep it a stack. So they don't Miami don't got that like in spades over them. Yes, they're a better organization. Yes, they've won more, but who who you want to play with? McCall or Jimmy for the next four years, th- three years? Who you want to play with? So hold up, a team that's made the finals two of the last four years. That's you great. You want to go there. You'd want to go to Brooklyn, where I think they both have a fair shake. Is all I'm saying. I think they, I think he uh, he's right to want to go there. I just think that if you if he's gonna tell them where he wants to go, he's gonna be like, I'm go with either Miami or Brooklyn. My preference is Miami, but I'm open to Brooklyn. He's gonna say that. My preference is Miami, but I'm open to Brooklyn. 
wherever you guys get the better deal, it's fine. My preference is Miami, though. And guess who's going to outbid the other if it comes down to that? The places are going to do what's best for them. You're, making, it's, it's you're making him sound like he's that guy from that commercial where he's like, I touched the ball. It was out on me. He's it, not it, that guy. He, he's he, not going to let the... I almost cursed. He is some I touched the ball. That's him. He's, uh, he's an I touched the ball dude because... What, what what would that do from that commercial to be doing right now? Exactly what Dame is doing, playing playing chicken with the situation, not coming out and requesting the trade when you know that the writing's on the wall is right in front of you and you're not requesting the trade. So clearly, your eyes some touch the ball last thing against you. That's who you are. That's who you are. Him. That's that's they're one and the same. Those two guys. That's probably his cousin in that commercial. So come on, <laughs> that's exactly what Dame is. Respect the grind. You, you hear his music. He, he he basically making uh, making secular gospel these days if you can even do that with his music he don't even come on come on man that's who he is hey i'm one of those people i'm annoyed with this situation i'm glad y'all talked about it i don't really have much to say on it to this point it's like dame just needs to request a trade or like you said say you stand because the thing is bradley bill Listen, he said, yo, you know what? Fine, I'll take the trade option. Dang, your money is going with you wherever you go. You got your contract. You got the big contract. Whatever team you go to, you get a chance to win and you keep your money. That's I, don't see, I, don't see, I don't see what the thing is. Like Brad Bill, he's keeping his money and he don't care about winning. Dame, you give us the impression that you care about winning. So go win. And you keep your money. You're not losing anything. But Tony, you saw how swift his decision was. Like they, the rumors came out that Bradley Beal could request a trade, and all of a sudden, a day later, they're gonna help him find a different team to go to. This Dame thing, the rumor's been out there for months, but it keeps going back and forth. He's gonna request a trade. No, I think I'll stay. How long are we gonna do this tap dance for? Like the off season's about to start. Free agency's about to start. All these teams, teams that have a chance to wait, fine, you can wait. But, like, teams want to know now so they can factor that money in. They can see what other moves they can make. Like, Dane, we don't need this decision to be happening in August when Summer League is about to start. We need this around free agency. We need this in the next week. Like, do you want to have your own decision? Do you want to be, you want to be like Brian? You want a TV show or something? You want people to come to Portland? Cause it, it 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 don't make no sense. I'm tired of like like Ma said. It's just tap. I'm tired of. I've said, told y'all in the chat. As a individual, I have lost so much respect and dislike Dame on so many on so many levels. Like I'd rather see Qatar go by the Wizards than deal with Dame and his nonsense. This is 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 it's annoying. It's back and forth. It's disgusting. Yo, but I'd respect it a whole lot more if he didn't come out and say, like, I'm trying to be somewhere I want to win. I want to be in a position where I can win. If, like, you want to stay, just say you want to stay. Don't, like, come out and be like, oh, if if I'm not in a position I can win, then I might have to, you know, make some changes. Like, which, are you in or are you out? Like You, flip you ain't been in a position to win since you landed there. <laughs> you suddenly want to be in a position to win it's like he want to say the right thing in front of the cameras dang if you don't really care about winning just stay it's fine you're one of those stars that nobody's going to hold it against you honestly nobody's going to hold it against dang nobody's going to hold it against bradley bill y'all not in the conversation respectfully for the top five top ten players so yeah, nobody that. hold that against y'all anyway just stay in you're not a go. You, you see what Giannis did. You see what Jokic did. He's like, all right, if I could stay in one place and win in that one place, that ring looks so much better than if I ask out and I go somewhere else. But when was the last time Portland's been a, in a position to win? Like they made that one conference finals run. But since then, what what has he done? He's, and that was that was lucky. Finalist. That was lucky. Any to any who that run. They, Portland ain't been relevant in a championship conversation since like Clyde Drexler playing against the Lakers. Like Portland ain't Portland, bro. You got drafted by the Trailblazers. If bro. you really cared about winning, 
by the time that rookie deal was up, you sign, get your money, and say, yo, I want out. I'm starting to believe all this back and forth. Dame don't really care about winning. Dame was more, you know, I want to respect the grind. I can't, I can't ask for a trade. It goes against all my lyrics that I put out in the last two albums. Look, teams, and this is NBA history. Look at the history books. Teams that are led by point guards are, and as, and, and I mean by that, what I mean by that is point guards are your, is that's your best player. Your best player is your point guard. Those guys, those teams don't win. That's not how you construct a winner. Usually you win a championship if your best player is six foot seven and above, right? I think that's just the history of the game, okay? Jokic and Giannis can stay, can stay low to the soil, as Dane would say, because they're both damn near seven feet tall, huge, and they can impact the game in a lot more ways than Dane can. That's just the reality of it. So, and, and by the way, I'd argue that there's no point guard I've ever seen in my life that could be the best player on a championship team and, and, and consistently, right? And win championships that way, right? I just don't, because I'm sorry, Steph's not that to me either. Steph is not an example of that to me because Steph's championship in 2015 was Fugazi. I will say it to the end of time. It was. If Kyrie didn't fall fall down and break his kneecap and, and Kevin Love didn't wake up one morning and stretch and crack an elbow, then... Hey, 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 chill. Somebody actually pulled that out during the game. <laughs> Whatever. That was a dirty play. <laughs> Well, my point exactly, right? It took a lot of luck for him to win that championship as the best player on that team. And when they got to the finals, he wasn't even the best player on the team. Andre Godala made a bunch of big shots out of nowhere. All right, so don't, don't do that. There's, there's never been a point guard you've seen that was the best player on their team that dragged their team to a championship. Usually it's a guy who's 6'5", 6'6", Kobe, LeBron, Dirk, right? Dwayne Wade, Sha- Shaq. Right, you those guys usually the guys who would lead guys to champ, lead teams to championships. So, as a point guard from a team construction standpoint, your point guard can't be the be the reason that you win a championship unless they are huge, Magic Johnson type big and can affect the game in more than one way. Can defend multiple positions, can can be versatile offensively, defensively. That is not Dame, that is not Steph, that is not Kyrie, that is not CP3. That's why CP3 is number one one because he played with Tarzan. Uh, in 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 LA for years, he didn't have a skilled three next to him, a skilled big guy who could handle the ball and shoot the ball and have positional de- versatility. This is just this is this is prime basketball education. I, but I'm telling you, if you take the feelings out of it, for a lot of you, Steph stands and you know Dane, John stands, Stockton and stands, John Stockton, John, who even knew that? All so I'm supposed to believe that black people care about John, John Stockton all of a sudden, or is it because that you guys are on my? Because I said something. Because I said something. Right, and you guys want to disagree with me? Because since when do y'all care about John Stark- Stockton? For real, since when did anyone besides Mormons care about John Stockton? All of a sudden, everyone's a John Stockton fan. Everyone knows all of his stats. Everyone, oh, oh, he's better than CP2. You don't know shit about John Stockton. <laughs> Kidding me? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, bro. But my point is, my point remains the same, guys. Um, hey, the only player that's been able to do that, and y'all point- correct if I'm wrong, is Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. Detroit, and Isaiah, Detroit, Detroit Pistons, Isaiah Thomas was the only player under 6'4 that was able to lead a team to a championship, and he was the best player on the team, i.e. AI. Kobe said it best. If AI was 6'5, yo, the whole league would be in trouble. Right. But he wasn't 6'5. That's why he was only able to get one game out of those finals. And then it was curtains. It was night night. So to your point, that's why I don't like the discussion where they be, especially in the comments, they were like, oh, John Stockton was a winner. CP3 and including John Stockton, including Steph, everybody you just mentioned, because they are under six foot four, under six foot five, those point guards are always dependent on the rest of the team. Bruh. Put that in the conversation of, oh, CP3 isn't a winner. He's had to depend on Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan. He had to depend on Dane Harden, who who did not show up when it when it mattered the most. He had to depend on KD, harder last year. He had to depend on DeAndre Ayton. Devin Booker couldn't do it by himself. What you want? What you want six foot six foot Chris Paul to do to go win? If he had played with Carmelo in that era, he'd have, he'd have the same career, guys. He'd have the same career. CP has a legitimate case to be to be. To, we can say that he's better than John Stockton. Yes, we can. 
Yes, we can. It, it, you have to just be basketball brain there. Don't look at numbers. And then that, that's your indication. John Stockton did it playing alongside Paul Malone, who's one of the best players of his generation, even though he's a freaking creep. He was one of the best players of his generation, period. Okay, go look back at those series too, though. Car yeah. So I, go look back at those series. So our point, you know why Utah that? didn't win? And outside of the whole, oh, yeah, Jordan stopped him. You know why they didn't win? Carl Malone went missing in a lot of those big moments in those big games. And then John Stockton. John Stockton exactly. John Stockton is supposed to go, what, drop 50 and get 14 boards. And I he's supposed see, to go defend Jordan. Give like, me a break. Four. I didn't see Chris Paul lift teams up the mud in the playoffs. I didn't see any huge performance. That Spurs game seven, I saw it. I saw it when he was in New Orleans early in his career in some playoff games. I've seen it. I know he can go get you 45, 50 points if he wants to. That's how gifted of a scorer Chris Paul was in his prime. John Stockton was never that. And Chris Paul's passing ability and defensive ability, he made all defense at six foot in this era. Guys, Chris Paul did. So I know he could do the same thing. You're not going to convince me. That this Mormon is better than John than Chris Paul. You're not gonna do it. I'm sorry. Not gonna do it. No. And, and, and as far as the Blazers are, stop being stupid. You know, you know damn well through the history of the league that point guards cannot be your best players and you're gonna expect to win championships. That is not the way this thing works. It is not how it worked for the Warriors either. It's not. It was a it was a it was a sum is greater than one part to the situation for the Warriors. Okay. They built a, a functional great machine and added Kevin Durant to it and put it on steroids and they won two more chips. It is not just that. So I don't want to hear that, bro. No, but that's the thing, though. Like, it can happen. Like, it's not like it's impossible. Like, Chauncey Steph wasn't the best player on his team Chauncey when he was the best player on that Pistons team that won a couple times early in the 2000s. Who? Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd was the best player on that Nets team. Like, they don't make uh, it to the finals. If uh, best player on the Nets team on the what well, with Vince Carter, or you're talking about early, even earlier than that, Kerry Kittles and them dudes. Because you're talking about the finals run. Yeah, the I'm finals talking run. about the finals run back to back years. I said, I said, I said, you know, if Jason Kidd's not there to keep everything together, y'all don't make it there. We, we, we to the point, they're not going to win. They weren't able to win. They, they, win. Win. they weren't win. able to win because they ran into who? Shaq and Kobe. Kobe and Shaq. Yeah, that's – And then, and then who, Tim who else Duncan. is going to beat them? But and then Tim Duncan. But look who they lost to. Tim Duncan, seven, seven feet. Shaq, seven feet. Kobe, six, six. six, six. Come on, man. And Chauncey Billups. To your point, yes, Chauncey Billings was able to win. He was the best player on that team. That was he was surrounded by 6'6", Richard Hamilton, 6'7", Tayshaun Prince, Rashid Wallace, and the defensive player of the year, which some consider one of the best defensive players of all time in Ben Wallace. The greatest defensive so player. To, so to, your, to your point, Chauncey Billings was able to do it, but he had to have that roster around him, just like Steph had to have the roster around him. AI wasn't able to do it because – he was dependent on Aaron McKee and Dakomi Matumbo had one good game and said Shaq was an okay player. Then Shaq went and averaged 40 for the next four games. Yeah, I was watching the Shaq documentary on HBO. I forgot. <laughs> the Kim made dumb. He's going to say he, he's an okay player. I can guard him one-on-one. <laughs> Yo, that messed it up. We go end up, we, we, real quick, what y'all think that Marcus Smart Chris stops Porzingis trade. I, I didn't mind it. Like I feel like at some point they were gonna have to condense the guards on that team. Like you got Brogdon, you got Derek White. They still don't really have a true point guard, but I feel like they're not done yet. They're like thirty percent into this offseason. Brad Stevens, he knows what they need to fix, and that was the thing. Al Horford didn't really give you much in the playoffs last year. He's the guy who was sitting out at the top of the key or in the corner waiting for Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown to kick it to him and not hitting shots. But Porzingis is a little different. Porzingis gives you a, a different element on this team. And I think if you add a, a, a good point guard, it would have been nice if they were able to figure out a way to get their hands on Tyus Jones or something like that. But that's asking too much of Brad Stevens at this point. But I think they're set up pretty nicely. It, it does suck that you traded away what some people might call the heartbeat of the team. But look what you got. You got Chris Stapps Porzingis. You got two first-round picks that you can actually use to make another move if you want to. Like, there's worse things that could have happened. You added a seven-foot-three big man who can shoot. I like on the flip side, 
to Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies to talk on that. Marcus Smart added with Jaron Jackson Jr. That defense is going to be elite. You got Marcus Smart on the perimeter, and then you got Jaron Jackson behind you with Steven Adams coming back from his injury. That defense is going to be good. My only concern with that team, though, now, if they decide to start Marcus Smart, if they ever play together at any moment, Marcus Smart and John Morant as your backcourt, that's two guards that can't shoot. That's not going to work. Memphis might take a step back this season. They didn't want to bring back Dylan Brooks. Now I think you basically you're going to have to rely on Desmond Bain taking like a leap offensively. Marcus Mark, yes, might have been the heart of the Celtics, but he's expendable because Derek White showed up on both sides of the court. Marcus Smart wasn't shooting well, wasn't, wasn't really facilitating. Who was, the, who was the star during the, the playoffs? Derek White. That made it expendable where it's like, all right, we don't need you, Marcus. We tired of your non-shooting behind. Like, you just being the heart, you, you, you're more of a UD right now because you're not adding up to the team. It was a cool move. It was a cool move for them to make, but like they've been trying to address it for a while now. They have a deficiency at the wing position. Like Dylan Brooks, they knew, I think, as the season went on, we're not bringing him back. They tried to make a trade for OG in Toronto, but they were asking for too much. They tried to make a trade for Mikhail Bridges, but what they were offering wasn't enough. And at this point, I, I don't think it was an even serious offer they were trying to make. So they've got to they've got to scour the free agent market, trade market to see if they can get a wing in there. Because if you're telling me they're going to run out John Morant, Marcus Smart, and then have Dylan Brooks playing the three, I mean not Dylan, uh, Desmond Bain playing the three, who he's like six three. He's not a, a wing, like he's a two guard. So they've got to figure it out. I know they drafted Zaire Williams a couple years back, and, I mean, we'll see what happens with that. But I think this team is trying to win right now, and they need a, a really good win. Getting OG would have been really good because I feel like he could fit a lot of teams out there. But we'll see. I'll say this before we transition to end the, to end the show. Chris Stops, the Celtics are getting the best version of Chris Stops. He's in a contract year, trying to get paid. And what did he do last season to get his extension, the $36 million that he was able to opt into? He only went and averaged 23, 8, 49% from the field, 38% from three-point, and about like two blocks. And he played, I think, the most games he played in the last three years of his career. He played 65 games last year. So you're going to get the best version of Chris Stops in Boston ain't going to play D. He'll get you a couple of blocks because he's seven foot three. Weak side help. But I don't think it moves the needle that much more for Boston. And those people that's talking about Boston is the favorite in the East now because they got Chris stops. Let's, let's see what the rest of the offseason holds before we crown Boston as the uh, <laughs> favorites in the East. Simply put, they got they they had a problem shooting a bunch of threes last year. They took too many. They added a guy who's gonna take more threes, and they added a guy who's not great defensively on the perimeter. Who who teams can expose in the playoffs and hasn't played meaningful playoff basketball in ages. Uh, so yeah, and, and they and they didn't address their biggest need, which is a point guard to make the lives of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum easier because those guys can't dribble like that. Or at least Jalen Brown can't. And you're, the way you get less isos by getting a point guard who can facilitate easy baskets and get them easy looks, get them on cutters, push the ball in transition, get them easy points, right? And they didn't fix that. They didn't solve that problem. And they traded away the heart and soul of their team. The only guy who was stand up to Jason Tatum when he was on some BS, they traded that guy away, the emotional leader of their team. So they're in shambles. They're not winning a uh, championship and they're worse now. Last thing I'll say, I just thought about that. Chris Dobbs is going to want to play best because, you know, he's in a contract year. But to your point, unless they add, unless they add a point guard that's going to be able to facilitate and make things easier for this team, this might actually be a bust in a trade. And I'll say this why. 
We've seen Chris Stops in a heavy ISO team in Dallas. What did he do in Dallas? No, didn't do well. Did nothing. He's on a heavy ISO team again right now. Yep. We're relying on Jason Tatum to be a facilitator and make sure Chris Stops gets his shots. Or we're relying on Jalen Brown, who needs to go to dribbling school, to facilitate and make sure Chris Stops gets his shots. Or, and Derek White, we trust, is going to make sure that Chris Stops, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum all get their shots and easier shots in the best position. Or Peyton Pritchard. This really might not work out unless they get somebody that's going to be able to make sure everybody eats B. Because on this team right now, it's looking real like, you know, one of those child homes where you got to figure out how you're going to get your food. Because it don't seem like everybody's going to eat on this team. I'm going to read this thread, and y'all tell me what y'all think. We talked about it, and we mentioned it. You know, we would end off the show talking about something that KD and his – uh Oh, boy. His business partner, Eddie Gonzalez, tweeted. Eddie Gonzalez, the player whose influence I want fully recognized and appreciated is James Harden. KD being more influential than LeBron is something y'all scared to admit. Eddie Gonzalez, they see it. They just don't like it. Doesn't fit the narrative. And KD ended it off by saying Kyrie and Russ inspired a whole generation, but they don't ever get credit for it, though. So we see James Harden supposedly doesn't get credit for him influencing. We see Kyrie and Russ mentioned. And then the big part, Katie is more influential than LeBron. That's a great question. Influential at what? I don't even have time, bro. Like, influential at what? This is so stupid that they, when you read it, when we talked about it in the chat yesterday, I thought we'd have some crazy discussion around it. But then you read it, and I'm like, damn, I got to go to work tomorrow. Like, I ain't got time for this shit. Because I wouldn't talk about this with people that I – with friends. <laughs> what are we talking about? Kevin Durant's more influential than Braun. At what, exactly? Like, at what? What is he talking about? What do, how is he influencing a culture more than, Le- than LeBron? Has he done more for the community than LeBron James? If, unless Katie's a silent partner moving around, and he's quietly a saint, uh, and he's building churches left and right, or whatever, whatever he wants to do, and you just don't know about it? The answer to that question is no. Is he more influential on the court than LeBron James? No, LeBron James has run the NBA for the last 20 years. Uh, he literally has a sports agency that, that dictates moves over the NBA, right? He was able to dictate getting AD to the Lakers because, you know, he signed with Clutch, right? LeBron is, is super connected, mob deep, mob ties, as Drake said. It, it, that's, that's LeBron at this point, right? Uh, as a basketball player, the question is it's not even a question. LeBron's a better basketball player. He's won. He's won with less in his career. He's he's excelled under every situation under imaginable. Um, so no question there. What are we what are we missing? What are we talking about? Is it because KD is it because KD's game looks pretty? Is it because KD could can score the basketball? A lot of guys can score. I don't I don't understand what we're talking about. You know what I mean? I think sometimes people get caught up in the game looking pretty and they just want to jump to saying ridiculous things. All right. Um the, you know, the K- KD is not influential in any walk of life, not more than LeBron. He's not more influential in any walk of life than LeBron, period. There's nothing he does better, okay? Nothing. The, the only thing KD is influenced is, like, I'd say it's negative, actually, is the fact that he's inspiring a generation of young boys to not brush their hair and, and put lotion on their legs. That's what he's into. That's what he's been more influential about. That's the only thing he's done more that, that, it can, that, can, that can even inspire this conversation. If we're talking about influence on a generation, Okay. Katie's had influence, though, right? The, the seven-footer, the, Vic, the Victor Wambanyama may not happen without Kevin Durant, it, you know? So that's cool. I think he's had influence. The seven-footer is trying to come along who can be the unicorn, you know? That, that's, 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 a, that's influence. I'll give him that. But it, do you have more influence than LeBron James? Katie, you don't believe that. And you, didn't, you sure as hell didn't say it did. Now, Eddie Gonzalez, we ain't got to talk about that because that's your cheerleader. That's your, that's your cheerleader. That's your guy, right? You want, LeBron had Shannon Sharp in the media. He had, he had people, right, Nick Wright in the media, going riding for him. He needed somebody. So you took this little pudgy dude from California or wherever he's from. You put him on FanDuel because that, that's, that's the way to get us all to listen to him, putting him on FanDuel. And now you've got to have him in the media to, you know, spreading your pop- propaganda. Okay. Okay. And Kyrie and Russ have inspired generations. It's true. They have. I don't, I don't see why that matters. That's not what we talk about with them. It's not the conversation. Did you guys win? Uh, in Russ's case, can you just stop being awful at basketball? He did. Great. Good for him. He did. Good. He answered some questions. 
Kyrie, can you stop being the weirdest person on earth? Like, can you just be normal for five seconds? He he is yet to answer that question. I don't think he'll ever be normal ever again. He may have been uh, exposed to some toxic waste or something. Something's wrong with that guy. So what are we talking about? Those are the conversations. Like, it's not about influencing the youth. Guess what? Every NBA player influences the youth, guys. Everybody does. The NBA players look to by, looked up to by the youth. So what is the accomplishment in, in, in that? What's the accomplishment? Zach Levine has influenced kids in Seattle. You know, like, I know Kyrie's got greater influence all over the world because he's great, cool. All right. Like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? I don't get it. It's like, what a stupid conversation. What a stupid string of tweets. Wasting my time killing brain cells. And the worst part is you'll post clips of me saying whatever I said. And then people are going to be like, oh, up in arms because I said it. But if Miles said the exact same thing. I would never. Kyrie's my guy. All right. Yeah, whatever. Jersey strong. <laughs> hey. He's your guy too, I guess then. <laughs> yeah, right. Shout out Amari Bailey did get drafted. He did. I saw that. Yeah, Charlotte, right? Yeah, and oh, I don't, I don't think he plays there, but Amani Bates got drafted. By who? Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah. I don't know if he plays there. But end off with this. Nikola Jokic had one of the most historic runs. We talked about it on some degree of his dominance. But all the time, if we placed them, you know, we like to do that in the media, people in the barbershops. Oh, what if LeBron played in the 90s? What if MJ played in this generation? If Jokic played in the 90s, I'm going to list the big men. You tell me if they, if he's better than them, if he's going to be able to beat them. And we end off the show right, right there. Make sure y'all subscribe, share this with a friend. Nikola Jokic against 90, 90s bigs. Who do you have in this matchup? Jokic against Olajuwon. Olajuwon? <laughs> Olajuwon. Orlando Shaq. Orlando Shaq. Orlando Sha Shaq was Shaq. Shaq's just an unmovable for Shaq. David Robinson. And Jokic. I, I agree. David Robinson would get demolished. We saw what Shaq did to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robinson get demolished. Yeah, you might have to send him back to the army. Alonzo <laughs> Morning. <laughs> oh, yo, 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 kids. yo kids. Timmy D. Timbo. Timmy. Last one. Uh, one of one person that is very dear and close to Miles's heart. I believe he had a henna tattoo of him when he was younger. Patrick Ewan. Jokic. Pat, Pat would eat him alive, bro. <laughs> it's crazy how he, yo, if not for Jordan, he would have been like the greatest player the last 20 years in that range. So, <laughs> I'm saying. I can't even use that clip. You can hear it in your tone. <laughs> you know it's Jokic. <laughs> yeah, well, if you probably, stay ready. Probably Jokic. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Blowing my shit. Play, yo, man. Send us out. If you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. Bitch, mom, EMT, we out. Peace. <laughs>